so in the last lecture we have covered uh, different types of resources or in the previous lectures we have seen or studied uh, resources okay our natural resources that is forest plant sorry forest water land okay in today's lecture we are going to see a new topic that is energy resources okay <coughs> energy a greek word meaning capacity to do work okay it is an intrinsic component of any social economic development for raising the standard of living and also improving the quality of life of man okay so energy consumption of nation is usually considered as an index of its development so energy is right now the prominent thing for required for the upliftment of the economy or the the development and as we know the consumption rate it's now considered as the index of development now why it is because in the race to uh, in the race of to become a superpower okay or the more dominant nation okay that the major factor is energy consumption that means the nation or the country who consumes more energy that is considered as it is a developing or developed that's why it is an index of its development okay of na any uh, nation the increase in human population and use of energy for new activities to improve lifestyle has depleted many energy sources okay as we know that the population is increasing and the requirement or the energy need for nation or the population also increasing so <coughs> to fulfill that okay, we are <coughs> dependent on the energy sources okay and as the rate of population increasing at that rate the resources are also not increasing okay so those who are resources who are limited okay or cannot be replenished then there is a problem regarding uh, the use of that energy sources but today with the challenge to support a large population human society confront severe limits for many of energy sources and thus the conservation of existing energy resources and exploration of alternative resources need the urgent attention of the world scientific community that means the rate of <coughs> consumption okay it is not the same uh, with the rate of regeneration or replenish okay so that's why that is the big problem regarding existing energy sources okay on the earth so that's why it is important to pay an attention on the this topic or the energy sources okay so before industrial revolution man used only muscle power to complete the work agreement with fire wind and water energies so <coughs> before industrial revolution and even the previous man okay they used to do their all work by muscle power or by the <coughs> by man okay but nowadays for each and everything there is a machine okay or there is a development or we are try to be providing facilities in each area of our life okay so that's why <coughs> the muscle power is less and consumption of energy for each work okay is more sun was the only source of energy at that time okay so first of all man learned to use fire energy to produce heat use it for cooking lighting and heating process okay at the beginning of the industrial revolution 
man developed technology of using fossil fuels even formation of fossil fuel that is coal petroleum natural gas is also due to sun energy trapped by photosynthesis by plant millions of years ago so the easiest source of or the quick source of energy which is uh, present right now on the earth it is in the form of fossil fuel that is coal petroleum and natural gases that we derive uh, that transform it into a different uh, kinds of energy sources okay or these types which gives energy a uh, types which give energy that means with the help of technology we are using or the fossil fuel we are using okay it is helpful but if you see the scenario in the world okay these are as you know these are the limited sources okay so dependency on this uh, fossil fuel or the non renewable sources is not good for human being because the formation of this fossil fuel or the natural resources which are non renewable okay they requires millions of years uh, years of period okay to form in that uh, proper composition or to form fossil fuel today in order to meet the increasing needs of growing population energy consumption level has increased and fossil fuel are being mined mercilessly to meet the energy requirement of thousands of hundred sorry of hundreds of industries automobile aircraft space vehicle thermal power and railway sectors okay so because of the population growth okay <coughs> there should be a different sources are available and human beings are more consuming <coughs> fossil fuel or the energy sources okay because different requirements that is industrial industry sectors okay or even the railway sector or any different developmental project and as we are developing uh, in as india is developing okay the energy needs are is very high okay and to fulfill that <coughs> somewhere we, we are more dependent on the fossil fuel so there is we have to shift on or we have to try to search <coughs> different uh, kinds of energy sources despite all technological advancement nearly 98% of energy requirements are still being met by fossil fuels which take millions of years to form therefore there is an urgent need to harvest energy from unconventional resources such as radioactive substances wind and sun okay so these fossil fuels are also called as a conventional energy sources that means once you use it it won't be replenish okay that's why if you see the 98% of the energy requirement is fulfilled by fossil fuels okay but the time of generation or the formation is millions of years so that's why it is important to <coughs> use them in a proper way okay therefore if we cannot use it in a proper way okay or these are not available in great extent or in a great amount as per the population then there is a need to find out any unconventional energy sources okay so if we see the growing needs of the india of energy so why there is a need to find out any uh, non conventional energy source or alternate energy source okay because if we see the growing needs of the uh, need of the energy that is from 1965 to 10 2020 okay <coughs> you can see a great increase in the requirement okay in 1965 the 
oil consumption or the oil requirement is very low okay and if you observe in 2020 it has crossed the 2000 tons of oil equivalent energy okay same for the coal you can observe it has increased in a great extent okay and with a great great amount so another energy sources like gas nuclear power hydropower wind solar energy biofuels and other renewable energy okay so these are the uh, this nuclear power or hydropower wind and some non renewable sorry some renewable energy sources so these are the other options that we are searching in 20s okay so if you observe that sector or sorry that section or the indicate these are not indicated or shown in 1965 okay because at that time we are more rely on the oil and coal okay along with the petroleum this <coughs> and natural gas but nowadays we are trying to find out different source of energies okay that's why you can observe here renewable non renewable biofuels so the total energy consumption percent in india okay if you see that this is the dark blue color it is coal okay this green color is oil and this red is combustible renewables and this so if you observe in the pie chart the majority portion it is covered by coal or peat that means the maximum energy uh, consumption okay or the requirement it is fulfilled by the coal okay still we are dependent on the coal okay. another <coughs> uh, or the next energy source is oil okay and the third one is combustible renewable uh, and waste okay so so these are the three main factors or the types of energy resources on which we are dependent or consume more in india okay along with that you can observe a nuclear oil natural gas and other uh, sorry the <coughs> renewable sources so this one is hydro the uh, water the energy generated by water or with the help of water okay so you can observe that this other options are very less or they are being used very less so that means still we are dependent on the conventional energy sources okay so <coughs> if you see the classification of energy sources okay, that is a renewable and non renewable energy sources okay first we'll see what are the renewable and uh, non renewable energy sources and the examples we'll study uh, afterwards so these are the so resources which can be generated continuously okay that's why renewable these are mostly biomass based which are renewed over a relatively short period of time and thus available in unlimited amount in nature okay that's why inexhaustible they are not <coughs> getting exhausted once we use them okay so these are present at any time unlimited okay and can be generate continuously so this includes conventional energy sources such as firewood petro plant plant biomass animal dung wa water energy and non conventional energy sources such as solar energy wind energy tidal energy geothermal dendrothermal energy etc so this can reproduce themselves in nature and can harvest continuously through sustained planning and proper management that means if we use this non conventional energy sources <coughs> or in a proper way and if we are able to manage them for the purpose of energy production then these are the great source for the environment and for human beings also so another example uh, another type is non renewable or exhaustible energy sources 
these are available in limited amount and develop over longer period of time that's why these are <coughs> non renewable okay that is they cannot be replenished once you use it that gets finished in the quant uh, they cannot be replenished in the quantities they are being consumed in given period of time that's why these are called as exhaustible energy sources this include conventional energy sources such as coal petroleum natural gas okay non conventional energy sources and such as nuclear energy okay so <coughs> the nuclear energy may be sometimes classified as a renewable energy sources but the thing is it is a chain reaction that means it can form energy by chain reaction but once that uh, the radioactive material okay or the isotope which is used in the reaction okay it won't be replenished though it is a chain reaction it is new molecules are forming and by that energy is formed so development of modern technological civilization is chiefly based on non renewable sources okay this serves as a fast depleting uh, and within a few decades they will get exhausted okay that means these reserves are fast depleting so you are talking about exhaustible energy sources okay so to fulfill the need of energy in of such a great population okay they, it is not possible by only exhaustible energy sources okay or non renewable energy sources so the unwise and exploitative use of renewable renewable energy sources have forced these sources resources in the category of non renewable energy sources as the rate of production of these sources become much less than the rate of their utilization thus it has become essential to look for alternate energy sources okay so even sometime uh, sometimes we exploit or overuse non renewable energy sources also okay so to reduce the pressure or the force which we are applying on the non renewable energy sources there should be a alternative source of energy which is easily available in the nature and can give energy <coughs> for small things okay so we'll see what is the difference between renewable and non renewable energy sources okay so this renewable energy sources are also called as the inexhaustible energy sources they are natural resources around us for example wind energy solar energy okay non renewable energy sources they are formed uh, deep down the earth crust millions of years that means actually these are formed by the the uh, decomposition of various animals and plants okay which uh, which were buried okay because of the natural calamities that means the previous civilization was uh, buried below the soil layer okay because of the any natural calamities or other things okay and by decomposition they by of different decomposers and microorganisms they formed into a new uh, way, new form that is in the form of fossil fuels okay and for that process even the destruction of of the whole civilization and the formation of uh, formation into a fossil fuel okay or the conversion into fossil fuel it is it requires millions of years so it can be gener the renewable energy sources can be generated continuously 
and non renewable energy sources it cannot be generated continuously okay that's why these are uh, inexhaustible sorry it should be exhaustible okay it is environment friendly as amount of carbon emission is low okay so it is environment friendly okay carbon emission low that means the greenhouse effect or the is less or it is negligible so there will be no rise in the temperature and <coughs> no melting of glaciers but for non renewable energy sources these are not environment friendly because carbon emission is high so if you ob uh, observe the uh, micro molecule sorry molecules which are present in human and animals okay the majority uh, the or the maximum amount of component which you can observe is carbon okay <coughs> so by burning or the fossil fuels are formed by the decomposition of this animals or plants or other organic material okay that's why by burning them or by using them the emission of carbon is very high okay and that's why they are causing or this is one of the cause of pollution so renewable energy sources are pollution free and non renewable energy sources are not pollution free okay so renewable energy renewable or inexhaustible energy sources these are <coughs> sustainable okay can sustain for longer period of time on the earth and we can rely on them and non renewable energy sources are exhaustible that means once you use they won't be able to replenish so renewable energy sources that they are present in unlimited quantity while non renewable energy sources present in the limited quantity okay and the other difference is the resources can cause no harm to life on earth as these are pollution free and environment friendly okay there is no serious health hazards or the harm that's uh, been observed have been observed okay so these are this resources can no harm cause no harm to life on the earth while non renewable uh, sources show adverse effect on the health of organism of an organism by emitting radiation smoke carcinogenic elements to the environment okay the renewable rate of uh, renewable energy sources that the rate of renewal of these sources are greater than the rate of consumption that means the rate of uh, regeneration it is higher than the rate of consumption okay. or the rate of renewal is higher than the rate of consumption while if we compared with the non renewable sources the rate of renewal of the sources is lower than the rate of consumption because these are present in a limited quantity okay and the formation or the process of formation of this uh, non renewable sources which are in the form of fossil fuels requires that millions of years okay and that is not the case with the renewable energy sources so first we will see what are non renewable energy sources the first one is coal okay so coal is the major source of energy in the world it is formed 25 to 55 to 230 million years ago <coughs> in the hot damp region of the earth during carboniferous period okay so for the non uh, life science background student carboniferous is the period where <coughs> the majority of the diversification uh, takes place that means the large number of uh, different kinds of animals or different types of animals were uh, existed or they were existing on that period that is the carboniferous period okay 
that means all the life was flourished at the carboniferous period now <coughs> by the extinction of uh, this uh, carboniferous period that means the insects uh, or the organisms which were present during that period okay uh, got buried okay below the earth crust because of any natural calamity because the heating of meteorite or the volcano or any other thing okay they get, got buried no, below the earth surface and after so million years after that we are getting those <coughs> organic material it is in the form of coal or other uh, natural uh, you can say the renewable and en non renewable energy source okay. so co coal constitutes carbon that is 60 to 90 percent hydrogen uh, 1 to 12 percent oxygen 2 to 20 percent nitrogen is 1 to 3 percent and is a small amount of phosphorus and sulfur okay. so if you observe the great or the highest amount is of carbon okay. that's why there is a high value for coal <coughs> as a natural source of energy okay. so coal is specially abundant uh, and itself can sustain a current energy consumption of entire planet for 600 years okay. so that's why it is we are more rely on the coal okay. so uh, the it is this was the fuel that launched the industrial revolution okay because quick source of uh, that energy okay it is currently making a comeback that is china is constructing a coal fired uh, power plant every week so coal is a faster growing fossil fuel and it is large reserve would make it more popular to meet the energy demand of the global community short of concern of global warming okay. so with the fisher drops process it is possible to make liquid fuels such as diesel and jet fuel from coal so by different processes we can convert coal that is solid form of uh, energy uh, source can be converted into a liquid okay or even in the gas form okay but the in the fuel form it is more preferable okay in general there are following four basic varieties of coal which are the result of geologic forces have altered plant material in different ways okay. so there are different types of uh, coal okay, according to the carbon percentage okay. and the first one is anthracite okay. so sometimes called as a hard coal and it is it contains more than 80 percent of carbon okay. so anthracite has highest energy content of coal and it is used for heating and generating electricity okay. and it has a great value in the market and the next one is bituminous coal it contains up to 80 percent carbon and it has higher uh, value than the lignite and sub bituminous but less than the anthracite okay so it is used to make coke that means the same percentage you can observe with bituminous coal okay but <coughs> it has less value as compared to the anthracite in the market because anthracite is not easily available or it is available only in a specific re region okay. the another one is lignite so it contains 60 percent carbon 
so lignite is a brownish black coal with a generally high moisture and ash content and lower heating value so as compared to other types of coal this lignite it is a brownish blackish co black in color okay and this generally contains high moisture or the high ash content and lower heating value because of the moisture and ash okay and the carbon percentage is also low as compared to the uh, anthracite the last or the the next type is peat okay it contains less than 60% carbon so india is about uh, 5% of world's coal and indian uh, coal is not uh, that not very in terms of the heat capacity okay so major fields in india like rani ganj jahira bakora the singurali <coughs> singrauli and godavari valley okay so coal coal states of india are jharkhand orissa west bengal madhya pradesh andhra pradesh and maharashtra okay, where the coal is available anthracite coal occurs only in jammu and kashmir okay at this present at the present rate of usage the coal reserves are likely 200 years and if it is used increase if its use increased by 2% per year then it will last for another 65 years okay so <coughs> that is a very limited time period if that means even if we increase by 2% okay and that is a very short uh, percentage or the short increase of usage so if you observe in the map of india okay the region on the uh, states where the coal mines are there okay that is in the andhra pradesh telangana maharashtra chandigarh then jharkhand and west bengal okay in maharashtra there is a varda that is a coal mine okay in telangana it is a varangal and alidabad sorry adilabad uh, coal mines are there in andhra pradesh that is kadap okay and at the river of godavari okay there is a uh, godavari valley okay there is also a coal mine plant Chhattisgarh there is a Korba, <coughs> Jharkhand there is a Jhana and Bukara, okay, and in the West Bengal there is a Rani Ganj. So these are the limited source available in India. Okay. So when coal is burned, it produces carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas responsible causing enhanced global warming. and coal contains impurities like sulfur there uh, and nitrogen therefore it burns and the smoke contains toxic gases like oxides of sulfur and nitrogen so <coughs> as the more carbon dioxide and other gases greenhouse gases in the environment of course heat will get entrapped into the environment and cause a global warming okay or the green uh, greenhouse uh, effect along with that if these impurities are in the uh, suspended or these molecules are suspended in the air okay then it may show some hazardous effects on animals okay along with the plants because they may interrupt gaseous exchange or these oxides or the different kinds of molecules may show hazardous effects on plants also so as we know this is the limited source of uh, coal in india okay that's why we are more dependent on the petroleum okay so petroleum is the lifeline of global economy and it is cleaner uh, than coal okay so there are 13 countries in the world having 67% of petroleum reserves which together form a obe is an organization of petroleum exporting countries okay so about 1/4 of the oil reserve are in saudi arabia at the present rate of usage 
the world's crude oil reserve are estimated to get exhausted in another 40 years okay so some optimists however believe that there are some yet undiscovered reserves but we haven't uh, or we can't rely on that reserve okay because there is a uncertainty regarding uh, their presence okay or the existence even then the crude oil reserve will last for yet another 40 years or so crude pure petroleum is a complex mixture of alkane hydrocarbons hence it can be purified and refined by process of frictional distillation during uh, which process different constituents separate out at different temperature so in the map of india you can observe there are different refineries which are present or across the india so refineries we have okay but the <coughs> oil fields okay are very limited in india it is at the coastline that is at the mumbai high and beijing then one is at the kallur and the remaining one are uh, at the near to bhutan but <coughs> our right on this energy sources are less okay that's why we are more dependent on other countries for the export of oil okay or the crude oil so we get uh, large variety of product from this namely petroleum gas kerosene petrol diesel fuel fuel oil lubricating oil paraffin wax asphalt plastic etc so petroleum is a clear fuel as compared to coal as it burns completely and leaves no residue as we burn a coal the ash is produced or it is a residue so it is easier to transport and use this is the reason why petroleum is preferred among all fossil fuel okay and it is a high value in the uh, market also okay so liquefied petroleum gas that is lpg okay. the main component of petroleum is butane okay. and other being propane and ethane so the petroleum gas is easily converted to liquid from under pressure as the lpg so under pressure that is converted into a liquid gas Okay, oh sorry, uh, in the liquid form, okay, that is a liquefied petroleum gas. Okay. It is odorless, but LPG in our domestic gas cylinder gives a foul smell. Okay, this is uh, in fact due to ethyl mercapta, okay, that is a foul smelling gas added to LPG. So, any leakage of LPG from the cylinder gas can be detected instantaneously. So, oil fields in India are located as the dig boy that is Assam, Gujarat plains and, and the Bombay high offshore area in delta coasts of Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri and Mahanande. Okay. As this region that we have seen. Okay. Now, another form or in another uh, form where natural resources or the conventional energy resources are available as uh, it is mainly composed of that is a natural gas it is mainly composed of methane and with a small amount of propane and ethane it is fossil fuel so natural gas deposits mainly accompany oil deposits because it it has been formed by decomposing remains of dead animals and plants buried under the earth so natural glass gas is the cleanest fossil fuel and it can be generated easily transported through pipelines okay so it has have uh, sorry it has high calorific value of about 50 kilojoule per uh, gram and burning without any smoke so no residue or no any a mark 
which is uh, left behind by the burning ok. So, currently uh, the amount of natural gas deposit deposits in the world is, is of order of 80,450 uh, that is <coughs> grams ok. So, Russia has maximum reservoirs that is 40 and 40 percent followed by Iran and USA that is 14 and 7 percent ok. So, natural gas reserves are found in association with all the oil fields in India. Some new gas fields have been found in Tripura, Jaisalmer, the offshore area of Mumbai and the Krishna Godavari Delta ok. So, natural gas is used as a domestic and industrial fuel. It is used as a fuel in thermal power plants for generating electricity. So, it is used as a source of hydrogen gas fertilizer industry and a source of carbon in the tire industry. So, in which way we can use this natural gas ok. Mainly it is used in two form that is compressed natural gas and the another one is synthetic natural gas. So, compressed natural gas it is being used as an uh, alternative to petrol and diesel for the transport of vehicle. So, in the daily they have totally shifted or switched over to CNG ok, where buses and auto rickshaws can run on this fuel because there is a uh, air pollution. Now, even the another cities like Pune, Nagpur that is a big cities or the metro cities are switched for the uh, CNG ok. And CNG use has greatly reduced vehicle vehicular pop, uh, pollution in the city ok. So, some synthetic natural gas it is a mixture of carbon monoxide ok that is uh, in the different form. So, <coughs> it is connecting link uh, between fossil fuel and submitted substituted natural gas ok. So, low grade is initially transformed into synthetic gas by gasification followed by catalytic conversion to methane ok. So, in this two form we can use the energy ok. The another form of energy is nuclear energy. So, nuclear energy uh, can be produced from mineral minerals such as thorium, uranium, beryllium and zircon and limelight sorry illuminate sorry. So, this one is thorium, uranium, zircon and illuminate ok. So, what we will see there are two main processes by which the <coughs> nuclear energy can produce energy ok or we can produce nuclear energy uh, by these two processes ok. The first one is nuclear fusion. So, it is a nuclear change in which a chain reaction is initiated by one neutron bombards the uranium nuclear releasing huge amount of energy two small nuclear that is beryllium and krypton and three neutron ok. So, as in the picture you can observe there is a uh, deuterium it is a hydrogen derivative ok. That means, two uh, it is a duplet of hydrogen and uh, by the fusion ok it is forming a uh, three that is the one molecule that is a, a helium ok. So, if you see the atomic number it is uh, hydrogen with the three it is a helium two is a deuterium. So, <coughs> and the by this process one proton sorry one neutron is eliminated or the produced and energy is formed ok. So, nuclear fission reaction between two hydrogen nuclei which takes place at a very high temperature that is 1 million Celsius degree ok and the one neutron and the one fusion nucleus of helium H 3 is formed along with the huge amount of energy ok. So, 
these are the radioactive substances okay. the another process is nuclear fusion that is between two hydrogen uh, two nuclei okay that means which takes place at a very high temperature okay the so one neutron and one fusion of the helium that is h3 is formed with a huge capacity okay or we can say <coughs> that is suppose the, uh, the neutron is bombarded on the in the substances suppose we are taking here uranium okay that is a radioactive substance and if nucleus sorry neutron bombards on this uh, uranium okay and it is releasing very high energy which is in the form of krypton and beryllium okay and along that process three neutrons are released okay again that chain reaction continues that means that single neutron is bombarding on the another uh, nucleus of the radioactive material that is uranium again the three neutrons are generated or they are liberated in that reaction and likewise this chain reaction is continuing okay and each time the three neutrons are formed okay or they released during that reaction that is a nuclear fusion so what is the difference between fusion and fusion fusion is splitting that is splitting a larger atom into two or more or a smaller one Okay, and the fusion is joins two or more lighter molecule to form a large one. Okay, so by fusion and fusion in that process, the some amount of energy is liberated. Okay, and that is used as a nuclear energy. So worldwide there are currently 435 operational nuclear power plants with further 30 under construction. So among the nation among the nations not currently using nuclear power on are Iran, North Korea, Australia, Turkey, Indonesia, Vietnam, in Israel, Egypt, Poland. Okay, but now they are proposing to do so because every country needs a nuclear power for protection and even for the future perspective. Okay, so India is very rich in nuclear energy minerals such as thorium and uranium okay, because they are present in a great quantity. In terms of energy, these reserves are equivalent to more than 30 times of our reserve of coal. Okay. Hence, India has ample of potential for the development of nuclear energy. So, Jharkhand, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh are well known for uranium possessing states of India. Okay. So, this was the recent discovery regarding the, uh, the nuclear power. It is a nuclear fusion. So energy was generated that uh, in the experiment was conduct the experiment was conducted in the California. Okay, the the lab is Lawrence Liver model. Okay, so the experiment was to form a energy to generate energy. Okay, by uh, the one glass of water. Okay, or with the help of water, how can we generate? energy or the nuclear energy so the experiment was done successfully and this uh, the discovery says that from one glass of water we can generate energy or it can fulfill the requirement of energy for whole year okay that is electricity so <coughs> by uh, boiling water and the steam which is formed uh, that is used <coughs> to turn the turbines okay and then that energy is used to uh, for the nuclear fusion okay so this is why we are more uh, trying to explore this kind of energy sources because these are the clean sources or the pollution free sources okay so health hazards are not uh, we have seen or that the impact on the human body or even on the animal okay, that we have seen in the non-renewable energy sources okay. and these are uh, the we can say the cleanest and the easiest source right now we are available uh, that available for us.